All right, moving on. Basically, we're talking about exponents, but more specific, we're going to talk about scientific notation. And I will, and really, this is where we'll use this non-stop in electricity, because scientific notation is a way to keep large numbers to a smaller size, something like that. So it's a way to keep uh, very large numbers or very small numbers. So very large or very small numbers to a manageable size. Or in other words, to fit on your calculator. So they use the term prefix. I don't think I like the word prefix. That means before, but whatever. So there are a lot of prefixes that we use, but we don't have to memorize all of them. So let's see. Let's throw out a couple in here. Should go big to little, little to big. We'll go big to little. So Terra. Terra is 10 to the 12. 12th power. Its symbol is T, and that'd be 10 to the 12. So that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That'd be that many. Uh, giga, which is a 10 to the 9th, which is a big G, which would be uh, 10 to the 9th. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have giga, we have mega. Mega 10 to the sixth, which is an M, um, which is since to the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six. We will maybe use mega, probably not, uh, but we will use this one, kilo, which is at 10 to the third power which is a little k. It's a little k because uh, Kelvin is a big k. They got there first. So that is 1,000, 1, 2, 3, so kilo. So kilo is one we're going to memorize, and we're going to use that one a lot. Uh, there's hecto, deca, uh, deci, centi. Let's just go to what we're going to use now. So that's the, on the positive side. On the negative side, we will use milli, which is times 10 to the negative third. That's a little m from milli, and that would be 0 .001. So that's 10 to the third. It's moving the decimal place three places from the one. So it's another way of looking at it. We'll start it here, go one, two, three, right there. When we're looking at like kilo, we're moving it three places to the right. So we had a one, and we go one, two, three. So that's zero, zero, zero. And milli, again, we had a one, and we moved it three places to the left. One, two, three. So that's 0 .001. And we will, so we're going to memorize that one. We're going to use that one more than anything. And below milli, we have micro. Um, and that is 10 to the negative 6. And well, we already used an M twice. So we used, come on, thing, move. We already used the big M for mega. We use a little M for milli. So they use the Greek letter mu, M-U, which to me is a lowercase u if you write cursive. And that is 10 to the negative 6. So that'd be 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places, 0 0.001. We could potentially, probably not, use nano. Nano, not nana. Nana is my, my grandma. Uh, nano. Uh, nano is uh, 10 to the negative 9 with a little n. Yeah, we don't use that one in here. But we would potentially use pico. Pico, which is 10 to the negative 12th, and that's a little p, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That much. We use pico a lot for um, capacitors. Yeah, pico farads. Really only be seeing 
That's what I said. You're going to see it in capacitors. All right, so we got to remember kilo means 10 to the third, milli 10 to the negative third, micro 10 to the negative six, and pico 10 to the negative 12. And those are the four you'd want to commit to memory for class. It would be on a test, it would be on a quiz. I would write, you know, um, what is, you know, 4K ohms, and you'd be like, okay, four big little K ohms, that's 4,000 ohms, or uh, four milliamps, or it could be a number other than four. Why use that twice? I don't know. All right. So not only do we have the, the prefix or the word, but we have to work with things in scientific notation. So to convert, this is not wanting to play nice. Not responding. Please stand by. To convert a number from scientific notation, let me make sure I didn't go backwards. That's good. Um, from scientific notation. I'll say from scientific to a standard number, I'll call it a standard number. Move the decimal, move the decimal, the number of times represented by the power. And so scientific notation, a proper number in scientific notation would be 6.875 times 10 to the third. That would be a proper way of doing it. You can also see 6.875 written as 6.875 K. That means the same thing, right? Because K means times 10 to the third. 6.875 times 10 to the third would be a proper way of writing it. You could also write the K for the shorthand. So we want to convert that to a standard number. I like to use the word unpack because it's kind of what we're doing. We're unpacking this thing. We're going to make it into a big number. And as I said, you just move the decimal place the number of times you see the power. So the power on this is what? Three. three. So we just have to move the decimal place three times. I don't like to talk and move it to the right or to the left very often because it can get very confusing when we start packing it back in and changing a number to an, another one. So, was that left? Was that right? I just like to say unpack. I look at that and I say, I have a number that's 6.875. And I'm going to write it into a standard number, which means to unpack it. Is this number, when I'm all done, going to be bigger than 6.875 or smaller than 6.875? That's where I go with my brain. It's got to be bigger. So to make it bigger, I got to move the decimal place to the right. Maniac. So if I'm going to make it bigger, then I'm going to go to the right. So that number unpacked is 6875. I move the decimal places three places. One, two, three. So it becomes 6875. So what if I had 6.875? times 10 to the negative third. What is that in, in uh, prefix language? 6.875 what? Uh, milli. milli. So milli. And I want to convert that into a standard number. So I have to unpack it. When I'm all done, will that number be bigger than 6.875 or smaller than 6.875? Smaller. So I'm going to move the decimal place to the smaller way, which would be? my left. So 6.875 is my number. I got to move it how many places? One, two, three. Fill in the zeros. So it becomes 0 0.006875. Well, I guess we can talk about rounding right here is a good time to talk about rounding. 
So inevitably, someone will say, how many places do you want me to round that to? And I will say, I don't know. I can't answer that question. And I'll tell you why I can't answer that question. Because if you wrote 0 0.006875 and I said round to three decimal places, rounding it three decimal places, I would go one, two, three. I'm going to round it to six to, to three decimal places. So when we're rounding, I was taught, underline the number you want to round to. So I'm going to round to three places. I'm going to round to the six. And we look at the number next to it, to the right. And if that number is uh, equal to or greater than five. five, we go up. And if it's less than five, we go down, which is to say eight is bigger than equal to five. So the six becomes a 0 .007. So if I said round three decimal places and that was the number you wrote, you would come up with seven. However, if I wrote 6.875 times 10 to the negative third, or I wrote 6.875 milli, and I rounded to three decimal places, what would my number be? Three decimal places. I, my, if I rounded three decimal places, I would end up with 6.875. So do you see why it's difficult for me to answer where do you round? I don't know if you're using uh, prefix numbers, uh, scientific notation, or if you're just writing it out. So I guess I could say six decimal places, but then uh, that would get confusing. So yeah. Is there a more correct way to write that if you wrote 0 0.006875 or if you wrote 6.875 milli? Would, would one of them be more correct than the other? No. I would say no. I would say no. If I'm working with you and you're doing your project, uh, we're, we're working with, uh, you know, you're measuring something and you said to me, oh, that's 0 0.006875 amps. I would say, okay. And the guy next to you goes, well, I measured it and it's 6.875 milliamps. Okay. I'll speak the language you want to speak. It's fine with me. Because some people, I think your brain may work better one way than the other. And I don't want to force you into... I want the right answer, so we can, we'll can we work together. Now, I may ask you after that, if you said, well, my answer is 0 0.006875 amps, I say, well, what is that in milliamps? And you'd be like, oh, that would be, and you'd take out a piece of paper and a calculator, and you'd write it out and go, oh, it's 6.75 milliamps. I say, okay. I think you're going to have an easier time. There's times when it's easier to do milli, like if you're reading the meter because it tells it to you in milli, but when you're doing the math on a piece of paper, it's sometimes easier to not have it in milli, so you don't have to convert it and then multiply it. So it just depends, but I'm okay either way. The big point, I guess, here is, number one, is everybody clear how to round and when to round? So you look at the number to the right. If, so if I had 0 .006475 <clears throat> and I wanted to round to three decimal places, it would be 00, zero what? Six. I almost said five. <laughs> all right, we would not change that number. So, all right, but um, the point is something else. I don't know. Be careful how you round, because if you round that number to seven, we're going to get into a situation where you're going to round, you're going to round, you're going to round. Before you know it, your answers are not even close to mine. I'm going. I don't know if these are right or not, and it makes it a little difficult. So you don't want to do that. Too much rounding creates a lot of problems. Try not to if you can help it. Okay, so we know how to pack and unpack. Do one more. Um, I don't know. I had 8.375 um, milli. What is that written out? 0 0.008375. I had to move the decimal place over three times. And if I had 5.75K, what is that? I'm going to move it three places to the right. So five, seven, five, one, two, three. So it's 5,750. Milli is times 10 to the what? Negative third. And kilo is milli or times 10 to the 10 to the third. Okay. Um, let's see. 
seven. All right, to convert out of. So to convert, to convert uh, to scientific notation. You must have a number between one and nine. So you must have a whole number between one through nine. So count the number of places or another way to say it, or count the number of count number of places to move decimal to move decimal to create a whole number I should just wrote that whole number between one and one through nine so if I had Point zero 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 eight one five. I need to end up with a number between one and nine. So I have to move the decimal place over how many times? Well, let's try it. One, two, three, four places. So it's 8.15 is eight between one and nine. Okay, and I moved it four places. So 10 to the well, it's going to be start with a 4, but is it a negative 4 or a positive 4? Well, the way I look at it is I sit here and I go, okay, I ended up with 8.15. If I unpack it, does it get bigger or smaller? 00815 is smaller than 815. Everybody see that? So if, it's, if, if I have to unpack 8.15, to get it to 0, 0, 00815, is the number going to get bigger or smaller when it goes back to conventional? Smaller. smaller. So this has to be negative. a negative. Right. As opposed to, what if I had one, oh, I got a big number, 157, 800, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. There we go. And what is that in scientific notation? Well, I can move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven places. So I end up with one point five seven eight times ten to the what? Positive eleven or negative eleven? Positive, because but when I unpack one point five seven and I get what is that one billion or something right there? Um, one hundred fifty seven billion. It's going to get bigger. Got that? Okay. Um, so now that you have all that, hopefully, what's going to happen if I had to multiply these numbers? What if I said, um, let me see. Um, no, let's just do calculate a simple one. So 6.375. And I want that. You wrote the Huh? I'm sorry. I'm actually trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to, to tell you right here. And now this is locked up, and so it's not going to work anyway. Um, there it is. Okay. Let's just say I got the number 6.375 times 10 to the third. And I just told you how to convert that. So what would be the number that it would be when it's all done? 6,375. Let's see what the calculator has to say about that. So now we're going to use our calculator. Let's go to this picture. There we go. And we are going to use this little EE -E key right there. There's the seven, it's right above the seven, the EE. -E. So the way to do that, we had, what did I say, 2.375, 6.375. The second key, the EE -E key, 
and then three. And that what that is doing is saying 6.375 times 10 to the third. That's what I just told it. So let's try that. Uh, 6.375 second EE three equals. And what did it tell you? 6,375. So now you can convert it in and out of science, or at least out of scientific notation. Um, try with the negative. What about 6.375 times 10 to the negative third? So 6.375 second EE negative 3 equals. Zero zero six three seven five. Everybody get that? So once you got that, now you can multiply things while it's in scientific notation. Without that, you have to go through the process of taking it out of scientific notation, then multiplying it, and then maybe putting it back in. And every time you change something, you can create an error. So if we had <laughs> six point three seven five times ten to the third times five point four five times 10 to the um, third, why not? What does that equal? Well, it, I kind of made that one easy, but let's see. 6.375 second EE third times 5.45 second EE third equals, and then what'd you get? Three, four, seven, four, three, seven, five, zero. And there's a way to convert it into scientific notation, but now I don't remember how to do it. I didn't write it down here. So, well, you just do it by hand. Let's convert this back into scientific notation. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So three point four seven times ten to the seven. We did it correctly. Everybody good with that? Can you go over the fourth one again? The fourth the, one again? Uh, six point three seven five times three times. This right here? Five, yeah. How did I do that? With the yeah on the calculator. Sure. So we did 6.375. I'm going to go slow and start there. So 6.375. Got that? Yeah. Then the second key. Then the EE key. Then three. Then times 5.45. Second key. EE. E, three. Then equals. Three, seven, three. Three four seven four three seven five zero and then I just counted and there we are right there. Um I've been using the ten with the second key. Oh yeah, you can do that too. Is that the same? Thing? I believe so, yep. Uh where's that one at? Is oh that's up underneath the second, the ten to the X. Yeah. I use the E E just I don't know how I got used to. I was just to. wondering if there was like a I don't think there's a difference, not that I'm aware of. Difference. If you're getting the same answer, then I did. no difference. All right. Um, is this a proper 63.75 times 10 to the third? Is that proper scientific notation? No. Why not? All right. Not between one and nine. What would proper notation be? Times 10 to the fourth. And you're just moving it over one more. So if we're going to add one more, I got to add plus one. Or just take it out and then count and do it all over again. So, all right, that's all we got there. Let's talk about computing area, which is quite simple. If you do it correctly. Oh, wait a minute. I think I forgot something here. Where the hell is that? Seven. I guess I'll circle around back to this one. All right. Um, you should have done it sooner, but it's fine. Computing area. So computing area, there's a lot of FA questions about computing area. 
And whether we have a rectangle or a square, I just like to use the same formula. The area, the area equals length times width. So the area equals length times width. And this is the, the width, and this is the length, and it doesn't matter. And this is the width, and this is the length, and it doesn't matter if you switch them up. I could have had it opposite. I could have put the length as width and width as length. It doesn't matter. We're just going to do that. And it's very simple. The problem where it doesn't become simple, or, or it's still simple, where the FA is going to get you is something like this. You have, a, tri you have a, a rectangle here, and you have one side is 24 inches, and this side over here is 6 feet. What is the area? Area equals what? And that's what it's going to get to. And so the first thing I do is I look at the answers. And they want it in inches. They want it in feet because this is inches and this is feet. Everybody knows that? Is that six feet? This is 24 inches. So what if they want the answer in inches? Then I am going to convert that six feet to inches. And I want it all in inches. So six times 12 is 72. 72. So it's 72 times 24 equals 1,278 1,728 what? Square inches. So it's either square inches or you can write inches squared. All right, but what if I'll just use the same one. We, get, we did that. It was um, 72 inches and 24 inches and you're like oh that's easy it's 1728 now look over here and it says well how many feet is that so what do we do by, by 12 right because everybody knows there's 12 inches to a foot so let's try that 1728 divided by 12 equals 144 and guess what answer a is 144 uh, feet Square. That's wrong. It's wrong. What do you mean it's wrong? Isn't 12, one, divide, one foot, 12, there's 12 inches to a foot, right? Well, you got like 100 <laughs> squared <laughs> inches. Okay. So then it's all those turned into feet. So he's absolutely correct. It's wrong. But I guarantee you that 144 feet would be answer A, so that when you get that, you go, Dad, got it, because there's only three possibilities. Let's try this a different way. What is, how many feet is that? Six feet. How many feet is this? Two. two. Well, six times two is? Twelve. Twelve. So answer number B is twelve feet square. Which is the right answer? It's twelve. Why is it that way? Because if you have one, one square foot, that's one feet by one feet, there are twelve little inches going across that way and 12, I didn't write them all in, 12 little inches going this way, and that's 12 times 12 is 144. So if you're going to do that, don't divide by 12, you got to divide by 144. I would not do that anyway. I would convert, I would go back, redo it, convert it to feet, and go, now what do you want? And that's how I would do it. You do it how you want to, but that is, that's my way of doing it. I actually run all the way to the end of the piece of paper. Imagine that. I've ever done that before or it's just locking up it's just being stupid on me today all right so make sure that you convert properly the inches and feet or you will be absolutely sorry um, all right triangles triangles are really uh, let me try a triangle let's do them this way is really just half of a square or half of a rectangle. So it is just length times width divided by two, if you ask me. That's the formula I'm going to use. I'm just going to figure out what it is for square, divide by two, and I'm done. So you get the, uh, make sure that you also convert to the right inches or feet, because that's where we're going to get you again. Um, the actual formula is area. Wow, this is really not happy today. I wonder if we just close this. Too many applications open? Uh, I only have one thing running, really, two things. So, 
brand new computer. I just bought it. What? Uh, who knows? <laughs> oh, um, today, <laughs> right before class, there was an update. All right, uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so the actual formula for a triangle is area equals um, one half uh, base times height. One half base times height. All right, but then we get into circles. Oh my goodness, is the FA going to get you on circles? Every possible way. Um, volume, area. I guess we could talk about volume a little bit. So before I get into circle, we should cover volume. So volume, what is the volume of a square or a rectangle? So we just have to look at the volume. means that instead of being square, it's going to be cubic. So if I have a cube that is two feet this way by uh, 25 inches this way, because it's almost the same, and it goes back 27 inches, what is the cubic volume of this in, I'll be fair, and make it cubic inches? Well, what are we going to do first? Yeah, I'm converting that to 24 inches right there. And so it's 25 times 27 times 24. It doesn't matter what order you go in. 16,200. 16, so 16,200 inches square. Isn't that the inches cubed? Yeah. 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 Cubed. Yeah, it sure would be. Thanks. Just make sure somebody's paying attention. Inches cubed. Multiply all of them, so it's 25 times 24 times 27. Doesn't matter what order. You can they the same normally thing. have like a name for like where that 27 is at? Is that like depth? depth? Yeah. Oh yeah, they'll call it depth width height. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which where you put it. And, and I'll draw it out, but it, it absolutely doesn't matter. Because if they're talking about, uh, you have a fuel tank that is 25 inches deep, by 24 inches wide, by 27 inches um, in height, you'd be like, well, wait a minute. I just called 25 over here the deep one, and now you're saying that's actually the height, but this is the depth over here going, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just draw it out, put it on. It absolutely makes no difference which place you put them in, so you're good to go. Um, let's see. Also, yeah, just be careful with converting because that, it's an exponentially. All right, but circles. So we have circle. Let's draw a circle. So circle. All right. The um, around. Let me see. Circle. So circumference. Let's start with that. Circumference. That is the distance around the circle. And the circumference, circumference equals the diameter times pi. Then we have, then we have, hello. That didn't work out well for me at all. Want a different color. Then we have the that radius, the radius, and that is the distance from the center to the edge. And following that, we have one more, blue, which is Blue, the diameter or diameter. We don't really say diameter. Diameter, distance across the circle through the center. Across, across the 
the circle through the center. Well, obviously, the radius is just the diameter times 2, or the diameter equals the radius divided by 2. It's just half of it. But when we get into areas, Well, hang on. The diameter is a radius. Oops, yeah, this goes up here. So scratch that. I was trying to do something else. Radius. The radius. Come on. Radius equals the diameter. The diameter divided by 2. And the diameter equals the radius uh, times 2. Did I do it right this time? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about the area of a circle area of a circle is the area equals pi times the radius squared. And that's the one I like to use right there. Pi times the radius squared. And so we're going to use kind of almost everything we learned. And one thing I should have talked about, but we'll come around to that. So what if the diameter of a circle the diameter of a circle is 10 inches. What is the area? Area equals what? Well, that's how it's going to be given to you. So we have the formula of area equals pi times radius squared, and all they're going to tell me is the diameter. They didn't tell me the radius. Now what have I got to do? All right, we're going to take 10, divide by 2 equals 5. So we're going to plug that in. So the area equals pi times 5 squared. So let's just pause there for a minute. We'll come back to this. Whenever we're working with math, we have the order of operation. Order of operation. And I do think that I, oh yeah, big note there. Do this sooner. Um, note over here, not on the last page. Let me see. That. All right. I think that I mentioned, maybe not to this class, but other class, I am in fact a genius. I didn't want to brag about it, but several internet tests on Facebook have declared me a genius. <laughs> and they can't all be wrong. Uh, there one, you know, there's a grid, and I had to find you know, the number within certain seconds. And, you, know, so anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. But speaking of that, uh, you know, the uh, good old, um, you know, only a genius can figure this out. Uh, 40 plus 40 uh, times 0 plus 1 equals, and only a genius can figure this out. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's either going to be 1 or it's going to be 41. Now, why is it either 1 or 41? Well, because 40 plus 40 equals 80. 80 times 0 equals 0 plus 1 equals there's one. Or we can do it the order of operation, which would be correct, which is please excuse. E -X -C -U -S -E. I'm not going to write My My dear aunt Sally. And I write it like that because it's uh, P is for parentheses P A R E N T H E S E parentheses parentheses or this so actually this one will be done first this one will be done second if you have both of those after parentheses comes exponents which would be either exponents or um, square root or something like that. We'll do those next. Then we will do multiplication, multiplication and division from left to right. Because if you did, please excuse my dear and said, oh, well, it's multiplication, then division. Well, that'll kind of screw you up sometimes. And then it is 
um, Aunt Sally's addition subtraction. So addition subtraction from left to right. So if we had some number like, not a number, but an equation, seven plus, we'll make it easy, six times five squared plus three, we'll put that in parentheses. What do we do first? Well, technically that we do, what is in parentheses first? So we go to the parentheses, then we start all over again. What do we do first in the parentheses? We do exponents, so it becomes seven plus six times what? Five squared is 25 plus three. Then what do we do? Multiplication from left to right. So it's seven plus, what is six times 25? 150. 150 plus three. Then what do we do? Addition inside the parentheses, 153. And we end up with, then we do finally, seven plus 153 is 160. Okay, so headed back up to here. Here, let's go. Let's start all over again down here. I used to use a different program. Let me go back to my different program. Wasting time. I've made my computer very angry today. There we go. All right, we had the area of a circle. Well, I don't actually have any room there, so now I gotta move down. Where we said the, give me a minute. I think maybe if I didn't have such a big thing there. All right, we wanted to know the area of a circle. Okay, so the, what is the area of a circle which has a diameter of, what I say, 10 inches, right? And area equals pi times the radius squared. So the first thing we had to do was take our 10 and convert that into a radius. So if the diameter is 10, the radius equals five. five. So we said, what is the area equals pi times the radius, which is now five times five squared. So what do we do first? Exponents. Exponents. We have area equals pi times what is five squared? 25. 25. So on your calculator, I would suggest pi is a mathematical constant for figuring out ratios of a circle. And pi is equal to 3.14, 3.14, what's next? All right, 14159. All right, so I would like to use the pi button so that I'm not rounding because the number never ends. So I would do 25 times, and there's the pi button on here right under, right there. One, two, three, fourth one down, 25 times pi equals. So the area is 78.5, let's round, what's the next number? Three, what if I wanna round it to two decimal places? Four. All right, so 78, 78.5. Five, four. Where you will see this a lot in uh, the FAA test questions is they will tell you about, I don't have my cylinder here, a certain engine has a bore of five inches and it has a stroke of four inches and it is a and the engine has six cylinders that is a beautiful fa test question right there what is the cubic inch displacement what is the displacement 
Let's talk about what that means. So if an engine has a bore of five inches, that means that the hole in the cylinder is five inches across, which is another way of saying it's the diameter. So if we have a certain cylinder that has a diameter of five inches, well, we have a piston that goes up and down in that. What is the square area of that piston? So we would figure that out first. So we'd say the area equals pi times the radius squared. Well, what is my radius? My radius is 2.5. Everybody know where I got that from? Half of 5. So area equals pi times 2.5 squared. So I'm going to go my calculator. I will say 2.5 little caret 2 equals 6.25. Pi times 6.25. So times pi equals, and I get the area of that piston equals 19.25. Six three inches squared. Everybody got that? Know how I got that? Nobody's lost. Everybody's good. All right. And so uh, once I find out this piston that's going up and down, how many little inches are on that? I just have to figure out how many inches it goes up and how many inches it goes down. It's the volume of a cylinder. Cylinder engine, cylinder, you know, what was the volume of this? That's a cylinder too. So how much does that piston go up and down? Well, it goes up and down four, four inches. So I multiply that times four. And I end up with 78.539. 78, so we'll call it 78.54. So every single cylinder on that has a displacement of... 78.54 cubic inches. But how many cylinders are there? Six. Six. I'll multiply that answer times six equals 471.2388. So we'll just go 239. 239 what? Cubic inches. So this engine is a basically 400. It's 400 if you round, and they always an engine is always round to the nearest tenth. So it'd be 470 inches cube when they made it. So how about a Continental 0470 engine? Is what that is. Yes. Uh, because in a, in aviation engines, when they actually give it a name, they round to the nearest ten. Nearest 10 to be 470. But the correct so answer is. That's 465 to 474 would be a 470. Yeah. Okay. But there's only one 470 engine out there, and it's 471.239. And we're trying to find the displacement of all six cylinders, right? That's why I multiplied this times six. I was trying to finish the work. I work on some later. I can see oh, that. yeah. That's not, I don't, I don't believe that's going to come up in this, this class, but it's, it's definitely the volume, I think it may be, I don't think I asked you the volume yet, but as long as we can get, um, get that, we're doing good. Um, I, to, I don't want to give away all my answers here. If you have, if you have, you do, if you have a tire on your car, anybody know that the, the uh, Diameter of the tire on your car? From here to here, it's what? 195. That's fine. 195 inches or not inches, be centimeters? I don't work in centimeters. My grandpa didn't fight in World War II for me to talk in centimeters. <laughs> All right. Huh? 31. 31s? Okay. Thank you. 31, so you have 31 inches. So if, if, uh, if I have a tire that's 31 inches tall, how far does my car roll forward in one revolution of the tire? So how would I figure that out? So what do I want to know? All I need to know is circumference. Circumference, that's what it is. So circumference is is uh, 
how far around a circle is, and how far around a circle is is how far it will go in one revolution. It's the same thing. It's just your tread kind of laid out. Roll it back around. So all we have to know is the, know is the uh, formula. So circumference equals pi times uh, diameter, right? Good for me. Huh? And so what is my diameter? 31. So it's pi times 31. 31 times pi equals... So how far will it go in one revolution? 97.39 inches. So sometimes you have to stop and think about a question. Go, hey, what are they asking me here? Just think it through a little bit. I've had people just get these tiny little questions, just rip their hair out. And I'm like, just think about what they're asking you. It's not hard. So... All right, I don't think that I have any word problems in this class. That brings us to break time. Why is it? Oh, wait. It's not inches cubed, right? Nope. It's not inches squared. It's not even squared. It was how far does it roll in one revolution? So it's the circumference. So your car will, go, if you have 31 inch tires in one revolution, it will go forward 31 inches. Now we could take it a step further. You have 31 inch tires. You live five miles from. I'm sorry. <laughs> How many times will your car go? Uh, I'm not going to make you do that, but it'd be fun to do, maybe. <laughs>